Hello and welcome to AITPM News. In this edition we hear how our definition of a common transport expression may mislead us. Government funds a cooperative research centre to help traffic to flow more smoothly. The Australian College of Road Safety makes a detailed submission to Federal Parliament. And a slightly longer story where we hear from two blind people about what helps when travelling on public transport. We all use transport terms to describe various situations, but not everyone has the same definition for the terms we use, and our language can affect our thinking. We reported last week on an AITPM meeting of the Young Professional Group in Sydney. Another insightful topic at the meeting that Brian Smith raised was the use of the term transport interchange. We think of a bus interchange at a railway station as a place to let off passengers so that they can go somewhere else. In this way, we often design the facilities from a one functional approach, which can leave them as concrete jungles, where the turning circle of a bus is the main determining feature, and then soulless tunnels lead you on to other transport facilities. Brian has helped to design transit locations that seamlessly merge into the shopping precinct. He noted that at King's Cross Station in the UK, 25% of visitors do not come there for the transport. They come to shop and look around. In Sydney, two recent examples are the new walkway from Wynyard Station to Barangaroo with bright modern materials and large video screen that, at the moment, has cultural images and no advertising or the proposed redevelopment of Central Railway Precinct, which will become a community facility, not just a transport hub. The federal government has invested $151.5 million in four new cooperative research centres. They represent very diverse areas. One is for high-performance soils, one is for honeybee products, and one is for food agility but over a third of the money will go to a new iMove CRC, which will explore digital and evolving vehicle technologies to help traffic to flow more smoothly. Ian Christensen, the head of the group that will run the CRC, defines its role. The Mobility CRC is a completely new CRC and it's focused on the things that cars are used for, which is actually moving people and freight around. So we're tackling the sort of more challenging and broad-based questions of congestion and of road and city design and of public transport effectiveness and of freight efficiency around the nation. The iMove Centre has already assembled 46 commercial, research and government partners prepared to contribute a further $170 million in cash and in-kind contributions over the grant period of 10 years. A link to the full interview we did with Ian Christensen can be found on the AITPM website. The Australian College of Road Safety has just released a submission to federal parliamentarians. As you would suspect, many things focus on traditional areas and the huge emotional and financial consequences of road trauma. There's a strong emphasis on legislation and enforcement. To bring home the frequent and ongoing occurrences of emotional distress, they quoted the experience of one person, born in rural Australia in 1967, who never had a major accident, but who had a close association with family and friends in 16 major crashes. The majority were fatalities and the others resulting in lifelong injuries. Amongst many points they made, some of the broader issues included this is really a public health issue and needs to embrace all health professionals. I believe this has to go even further to the very core of our social interaction. The work environment is a critical area. One survey shows, their report says, that 64% of worker fatalities involve vehicles. Of those, almost half occur on public roads. And due to the disruption in weather patterns, this will cause additional problems, but efforts to reduce greenhouse gases could have a wide range of positive impacts on reducing the road toll, such as slower speeds. A link to their submission is on the AITPM website. 
A company in America is using artificial intelligence to develop more empathetic train announcements for travellers. But have we thought this through for individuals who have a visual disability? We spoke to a few people who have first-hand experience. 20 years ago, David Saxberg went blind when he was just seven years old. In terms of information in the train, you have a problem. It might tell you what the station is, but there's a bit of missing information. If you're pulling into the platform, the guards and conductors have been taught in Brisbane to announce what side the doors are going to be opening or what side the platform is going to be in the direction of travel. Everyone benefits from getting information when they need it as Haley, who has been blind from birth, knows all about. So you can get the uh, station announcement repeated any time you need it by knowing where that little uh, stand is? Yeah, so basically it's like um, it's, it's, it stands at the platform and it basically beeps so you know exactly where it is and you press the button says the next you know, train going towards the city is arriving in such and such time. There can be those little nuances that can help. David, you found even the sound of the little chime beforehand can be a good indication to you. The upward chime says that the train's going into the city and the downward chime on the platform says the train is going away from the city. And I must admit, if I'm walking up the road towards the station and I hear the chime and I'm thinking, oh dear, I've only got two minutes because they give you a two-minute warning, you can quicken your pace. But if you hear the chime again, oh, no, that's not mine. I can take my time. We never want to be patronising. No, definitely not. And, no. I, and I think sometimes people may talk more loudly to you when they see that yes. you're blind. <laughs> yes. Oh, don't remind yeah. me. Yes. Yeah, they yes. certainly do. <laughs> yes, it's not good. It's got those good old misconceptions. It's not ill intent. I'm not suggesting that it is. But so a person might just say a very quiet, simple, you OK, or can I help or something yeah. you would yeah. always appreciate. Definitely, definitely. If they can just say, do you want, do you want some help? And even if you just say no and they say, yep, no worries, have a good day and that's it. A link to the full interview is on the AITPM website.